Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Today, we're diving headfirst into the exciting world of ethical hacking, and let me tell you, this is going to be a bonza one. We're talking about setting up your very own hacking lab right here in your home. Good on ya. So whether you're a newbie who's just curious about this stuff, or you're already knee-deep in code and want to take your skills to the next level, this video is your one-stop shop for building the ultimate hacking lab without needing a bank loan the size of Uluru. Stick around, because things are about to get interesting. Right then, let's kick things off by answering the big question. What exactly is a hacking lab? In a nutshell, it's a controlled environment where you can muck around with different cybersecurity tools and techniques without the risk of causing real-world damage. Think of it as your own personal cybersecurity playground like a digital backyard cricket pitch. Now you might be thinking, Struth, Linus, why do I need a whole lab for this? Can't I just learn this stuff online? And yeah, fair dinkum, you can totally find heaps of resources online, but nothing beats the hands-on experience of having your own dedicated setup. It's like the difference between watching MasterChef and actually having a crack at cooking a snag on the barbie. With a hacking lab, you can test out different attack and defense methods, analyze malware samples, dodgy software basically, and practice your skills in a safe and legal environment. It's all about building that muscle memory and developing the intuition you need to become a true cybersecurity pro, a real top gun. Plus, let's be real, there's just something ripper about having your own hacking lab. It's like having your own personal bat cave, but instead of fighting baddies, you're fighting off digital villains and saving the day, one line of code at a time. But don't worry, you don't need a bank account like Gina Reinhardt to build an awesome hacking lab. In the next bit, we'll break down all the essential hardware and software you'll need to get started. And trust me, it's probably less scary than facing a drop bear. Now comes the fun part, building our arsenal. Start simple and scale up. First, the brains of the operation computers. Refurbished laptops or old desktops will do. Virtual machines are your best mate here. Experiment with different operating systems and software. Use open source tools like Kali Linux and Wireshark. Basic networking gear is essential. A good router with security features is a must have. Finally, back up your data with a good external hard drive. All right, enough yabbering, let's get our hands dirty. First, we need to connect our hardware. Remember those old routers and computers we dug up? Time to put them to good use. Connect your lab computers to your dedicated lab router. Don't worry, this isn't rocket surgery. If you can plug in your Barbie, you've got this. The key here is to keep your lab network separate from your personal network. This isolation is crucial for safety and prevents any accidental stuff-ups from affecting your personal devices. Now let's talk about storage. You can never have too much storage, right? It's like having a bottomless esky. If you're working with virtual machines, you'll need heaps of space to store them. A good external hard drive or even an NAS, network attached storage fancy, eh? Can be a lifesaver. Remember, we're aiming for a controlled environment. So consider using a power strip to easily power on off your entire lab setup. Think of it as a kill switch. If things go belly up, you can shut everything down instantly. Once you've got everything connected, it's time to power up your lab computer and install your operating system. Don't worry, we'll walk you through the installation process in the next bit. With our hardware ready, let's inject some digital life into it. First up, installing our operating system. For our lab, we'll be using Kali Linux. Now you can install it directly on your lab computer, but I reckon using a virtual machine is better. It's safer and gives you more flexibility, like having a spare tire in the boot. Once you've got your virtual machine software sorted, download the Kali Linux ISO file from their official website. Make sure to verify the download using the checksum to ensure you're not installing anything dodgy. We want to be the hackers, not the hacked. Now create a new virtual machine, allocate enough RAM and hard drive space, and point it to the Kali Linux ISO file. The installation process is pretty straightforward, just follow the on-screen prompts. Trust me. It's easier than assembling IKEA furniture, and you won't have any leftover bits. Once Kali Linux is up and running, it's time to install some essential tools. Kali comes pre-loaded with a bunch of tools, but we'll be adding a few more to our arsenal. Don't worry, 
we'll chuck a list of all the tools and their installation commands in the video description below. Remember, it's important to keep your software up to date. Cybersecurity is a constantly evolving field, and new vulnerabilities are discovered every day. Regular updates ensure you have the latest security patches and features to protect yourself from emerging threats like patching up holes in your fence to keep the neighborhood dogs out. All right, time to address the elephant in the room security. We're about to poke and prod at digital vulnerabilities, and we need to make sure our experiments stay contained. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility, and all that jazz. First and foremost, disconnect your lab network from your personal network. Seriously, double-check those Ethernet cables. We don't want any accidental cross-contamination between our experimental playground and our precious family photos. Next, create a dedicated virtual network interface for your virtual machines. This further isolates your lab traffic and prevents any leaks into your home network. It's like building a digital moat around your castle to keep the riffraff out. Now let's talk about firewalls. Firewalls are like digital bouncers, controlling what traffic is allowed in and out of your network. Enable and configure the built-in firewalls on both your lab computer and your router. Another crucial step is to disable any unnecessary services running on your lab computer. The less there is running, the smaller the attack surface. Think of it as locking up all the doors and windows when you go on holidays. Finally, and this should go without saying, don't use your personal accounts or any sensitive information in your hacking lab. Create dedicated, throwaway accounts for testing purposes, like using a fake name at a dodgy pub. Congrats! You've built your very own hacking lab. Now it's time to put it to good use. Don't worry, we're not throwing you into the deep end just yet. We'll start with some basic exercises to get you familiar with the tools and techniques. First up, let's learn how to scan and map our network. We'll use a tool called Nmap which allows us to discover devices on our network and identify potential vulnerabilities. It's like having X-ray vision for your network, seeing all the hidden goodies. Next, let's try some basic penetration testing. We'll use a tool called Metasploit, which is a framework for developing and executing exploit code against a target system. Don't worry, we'll be targeting systems that we have permission to test on. Remember, ethical hacking is all about responsible disclosure like telling your mate their fly is down, not broadcasting it to the whole pub. Once you're comfortable with the basics, you can move on to more advanced challenges. There are tons of online resources that offer capture the flag CTF competitions. These are like digital scavenger hunts where you have to solve security puzzles and find hidden flags. It's like a digital Easter egg hunt, but with more bragging rights. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more you experiment and challenge yourself, the better you'll become at cybersecurity. So you've built your lab, you're comfortable with the basics, and you're ready to take on the world of cybersecurity. But hold your horses. This isn't a one and done kind of deal. The world of cybersecurity is constantly evolving, with new threats popping up like weeds after rain. That's why continuous learning is crucial. Stay up to date with the latest security news, read industry blogs and forums, and follow cybersecurity experts on social media. The more you learn, the better equipped you'll be to defend against the bad guys. Don't be afraid to experiment and break things in your lab. That's how you learn. Try out new tools, explore different attack vectors, and challenge yourself to think like a hacker. And hey, if you get stuck, don't be afraid to ask for help. There's a huge community of cybersecurity professionals online who are always willing to lend a hand, like shouting around at the pub. Remember, cybersecurity is a journey, not a destination. So keep learning, keep experimenting, and most importantly, keep having fun. And there you have it, folks. Your very own hacking lab, primed and ready to help you conquer the world of cybersecurity. Remember, this is just the beginning. There's a whole universe of tools, techniques, and challenges out there waiting to be explored. If you found this video helpful, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your mates, and subscribe for more awesome tech content. And be sure to let me know in the comments what you're most keen to test out in your new hacking lab. Until next time, stay curious, stay secure, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.